Uh, Google Slides, we're done. Oh, did you just go ahead? Yep. Yeah. Yep. The Google Slides is ready to go. So this is Word. Word practice for the midterm. PowerPoint. As a PowerPoint. Yep. So yeah, for the Google side, just download it as PowerPoint. Just to, sh just to practice that uh, uh, conversion to PowerPoint from Google Slides. And then just be sure to share the Google Slide, making sure to give anybody the link. Uh, would you like help show seeing how to do that? Or do you, is, you got that down? Uh, just to make sure, I would say anyone with the link. That's safest. Let me just go show you that real quick. For Google Slide, say I'm making a Google Slide. There's a wonderful Google Slide. Hoorah. I made a slide. Show. I do. Uh, I give it a title. Make sure your name's in the title. I can do a file share. And here, here the link is automatically masked, restricted. Change it to uh, anyone with the link. That's the best way. Then there's no doubt that I can get that link. Copy that link, paste it in your submission. But you're not done. Once you do that, also do a file, download PowerPoint. And then that PowerPoint version, just to give you some practice and help you remember, you can convert to PowerPoint. Not going to have all the features, but now you can then bring it into PowerPoint and add all those cool animations that PowerPoint offers. Okay, so let's go back then to the Microsoft Word document, blank document. The kinds of things, and I'll zoom in here for you, the kinds of things you need to do for Word. Let's just start out with some of the basics. One of them is setting the font formatting and size as, requ as requested. The kind of things that I'm going to request are going to be the base, some basic things that are on the ribbon, such as make it bold or change the font size. But I'm not going to pick a font size that's in the list. I'm going to pick a font size that's not in the list. Remember, you can type in whatever font size I tell you up there in the little font size bar. So 57. It's not in the list, but I can choose 57, and it will interpolate 57 for me. I will give you a font to choose, and you can choose the font as instructed and I'll probably choose maybe one of these other underlined or italic or something but I'm gonna pick something that isn't on the ribbon to make sure you know to go to the font dialog hiding in that little tiny corner in the font dialog are all the other possible settings for the font notice these the text is selected first but there's all these other options that I'm going to be throwing in one of these that you can't find on the ribbon. So remember that font dialog, such as double, is double strike through up there? Maybe, I don't see it, but there may be hiding somewhere. Say as a double strike through or some text effects. Oh, those, I think a lot of these, you can find them on the ribbon. Uh, underline style. You can actually go to underline style up there. It does offer that tiny little arrow next to the U. Underline color I can even set. So a lot of things you can do. Just be ready. If there's something you don't see on the ribbon, know you can go to the font dialog hiding right back there. Okay? And I'm going to decrease the size. 57 is a little big. I'm going to reduce that to how about 13? prime number. Okay, something else you'll need to do on the midterm. Uh, suppose you are typing somebody else's document. I am going to edit this document. Someone's given you a document to edit. I'm going to first save it in order for changes to be tracked. I'm going to save this in my section 2. I'll just call it practice for the midterm. That's a good name. Now I come back to this document. If I want to track the changes that I make, that someone's asked me to, to change, like say, add, add a sentence, but I want to track those changes, that is done up in review, 
turn on tracking changes right there review track changes these are my changes see the red line appears that's called the markup and that will let someone else see what changes you have made so you can turn on track changes underneath review and when you're done wanting them to see your changes you can turn off by just clicking that again and now it's no longer tracking but I can see that there was a change made up there and I can hover over that and see what changes there were so if you if someone has deleted a word or corrected a spelling hand you hand them your document they can see what you've done and of course you can decide then if you're going to accept or reject those changes that they made so when you're working with a group when your boss gives you a memo say hey could you update this let me know what what you need to change you say hey sure thing boss I know how to track changes I'll go edit it and you send that back to them and they'll say hey how'd you do that how'd you mark everything in red oh I was just, it was so hard I had to spend hours and hours no you just click track changes don't tell them that though okay so turn turning on off track changes and let's see what else we're gonna have to have you do something that not many people remember when I want to adjust these settings we we did this at the start of each project remember underneath the layout where you can adjust your paper size your columns we're gonna do columns later on but margins remember how you can adjust your margins given a custom margin down here I can choose any set of margins if I told you I'll just make them narrow everything half inch while well, you have some built in but I you can go completely custom margins and have 0.3 for the top 0.4 for this bottom 0.5 for the left and 0.6 for the right something crazy remember where you find that in the margins under layout other things in the in the layout will be coming to to columns we're also going to ask you to know how to insert breaks we'll come to that in a bit too but before we do that remember how you can modify your header and footer now this is a little bit of a pain because I made the margin so small so I'm going to increase the size of my margin one other way did you know there's another way to change your margin just grab that little ruler edge and you can adjust your margin that way I think that's a little more user-friendly way of adjusting your margin I can do it here as well but I have to get these other little guys out of the way then I can grab the edge and adjust left and right margins too but let's edit the header by just double clicking in the header double click and now I can edit the header now if you don't remember double click in the header you can always do insert header and you can choose edit header and now I can start putting something into the header such as uh, how about CS 101 fall 2020 I'm gonna turn off formatting marks because I'm getting tired of seeing those so editing the header or footer don't confuse the header or footer with footnotes that's easily confused while I'm in the header if I if I uh, scroll down notice I'm also in the editing the footer just click once in the header or footer while I'm editing and now I'll put in here this is the footer and we'll put uh, Emmaus Bible College and although I'm not going to make you do it in the header and footer you can also choose to make in the design part when you're in the header and footer you can actually choose to have a different header or footer on even and odd pages this is works great when you're doing you're planning to make a little booklet and you want a different odd and even or when you're doing printing out double-sided and the number wants to you want the number to be on the outside as they've as it's stapled you can choose different odd and even and you can even choose a different number on the on the first page okay but let's go ahead and put the let's go ahead and put a page number in the footer hit a few spaces and where do I insert the page number well under design it's hiding over here under insert it's hiding over where to go here so either place you can put in a page number at current position in design page number at current position 
and you can choose what style of page number. I'm just going to pick a fun one here. Oh, that was supposed to be a current position. So header and footer, a great place to put page numbers. And now, how do I get out of the header or footer? Well, I could click here, close header or footer, or just come over here and double click back in the normal text, and you're back out, out of the header or footer. Okay, so you're going to be asked to put something in the header and footer. Now you know how to do all of that. Uh, some of the things such as setting the style of paragraphs. Remember how to do that. Basically choose a style up there. Some easy stuff like that I'm throwing in there. Uh, also remember when you're asked to save the document, follow the instructions and give it the actual name, the exact name instructed. And here's something I'm going to give you. Another thing, say I have a paragraph one and a paragraph two and a paragraph three. To adjust the spacing between the paragraphs, select all three, either by dragging through the text or dragging down the left side in the margin. And to set your paragraph spacing over here, we can set it here. I can go to my line spacing options and up pops my paragraph dialog where I can have complete control over all my spacing. Remember, another way to get to the paragraph options is right here, the paragraph dialog right here. So remember how to get to those detailed settings for paragraphs. And here I can adjust my spacing before and after and even the lines in between. I can give it an exact number in the spacing. I can do a space before and after my paragraph. And I can also mess with my tabs. We'll be coming back to mess with the tabs just for practice. So let's adjust, we'll, we'll adjust our spacing just a little bit here. Let's go ahead and do spacing after. We'll make it three. Can I type in a number three? I think I can. So remember that paragraph dialog. There's everything. If you can't find it on the ribbon, pop up the dialog. Now another thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and make some, let's go ahead and I'll, I'll have some uh, tabs here. Let's make some tab, let's add some tabs that we're then going to make a tabular data inserted here. Let's put in our tabs first and then we will make a, make a table of data. How do you put in tabs? Remember, you have to have the have to have the ruler in view. Turn on viewing the ruler. To add a tab, you simply click in the location where you want the tab. By default, it is the left tab. So, say I want to put a tab at an inch and a half, and three and a half, and five and a half. I just click. If I want to adjust them, I can grab it and move it left and right. If I want to remove it, I can just drag it off the ruler, and it goes away. But now that I have those three tabs, now I can make a table. And let's just make them simple. One tab, the word one, and a homonym one. Next line, we'll make two, the number two, and a homonym. Three, oops, three, the number three, and a close homonym. So we have tabs here. See how the tabs have moved? Oh, I accidentally removed that tab. Let's control Z that. If I move that tab, it will. Oh, why are they? Oh, I actually moved it off. Oh, I don't have them selected. Now, if I move the tabs, now they will move in. Okay, that's not it. I'm not done yet, though. I want to have you learn a little bit more about tabs. This part was not in the book, so pay attention here. On the Home tab, under Paragraphs, there is a little Tabs button hiding in the Paragraph dialog. Now let's make sure you're familiar with that Tabs dialog down there, where in the Tabs dialog, I can actually add leaders to my 
tabs. Let's see if it remembers that. Oh, I've noticed this. I thought that if I added it, it would remember. It seems that if I have multiple lines selected, it's not remembering that I've added the dotted leader. It goes away after I've set it. So let's try this again. Let's go to 1.5, set the da uh, dotted leader, and then let's click set. Let's see if it does it. It seems to be remembering, but I'm not seeing the dotted leader appear over here. Let's try it on the 3.5. Let's make that a dashed leader. And then let's clear set, or click set. And let's try 5.5, and let's just set an underscore leader. And click set. Now if I will click OK, let's see if they then appear. Yes, finally they do appear in the actual text. So let's do that again. Say I want dotted leaders. That means put or fill in where the tab is with some some dotted lines or dot little yeah dotted line paragraph dialog tabs choose which of those tabs and what type of leader it has then click set and then click OK and those dotted leaders will appear instead of just blank space for a tab. Of course. I love tables more than tabs. So let's, next thing we do, let's insert a table. And I'm not going to make it easy. Because to insert table here, you know, that's easy enough. And I can make a particular size table. I can make it 10 by 1 all the way up to 10 by 8. Well, I'm just going to make it just a tiny bit harder, 11 by 9. How would I make it 11 by 9? Well, you have to go to the dialog so you can choose numbers bigger than what's available in the little array. So insert table, here's where then I can type 11 columns by 9 rows. So just to, just to help you or make you practice inserting tables of a specific size, not just the easy part here, but specify the actual number of rows and columns, more than a 10 by 8. And then continue then after the table. So now you know tab leaders, tables. Let's see what else. Oh yes. This this is gonna be a little little uh more complex for you. Let we need to make some text. So just make a make about four lines of text. Random text. Random text. I'm going to repeat that random text multiple times. I'm gonna select it. Copy and paste like crazy. Paste, 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 paste. The reason I'm doing this, and I'll actually probably have given you the text. The reason I want to do this is for you now to learn about making a section and changing the columns. Make a section, change columns, column number. Watch how this is done. I want this particular piece of text to be in, say, three columns. If I just go over to layout and change my columns to three, my entire document now has been changed to three columns. That's not what I want. Only that particular set of text I want to be three columns. So I'm going to Control Z undo that. And now, in order to make just this text three columns, watch carefully what we do. We, in the Layout tab, insert a break, a special kind of break, called a Continuous Break. What this does, it makes a separate section of the text coming after that. And to know the break is there, I can go to the Home tab and turn on Formatting Marks. I see that a section break has been added. And after that text, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to insert, under Layout, a Section Break and it's hiding away over here on the right I see a section break way over here now I can come to this text with my insertion point there and now I can change that columns to let's do something other than three let's go to more columns and let's make it five columns and I click OK 
And look at that. It has only added, uh, changed the text in that particular section. And if I wanted to make a different number of columns, I can just come back over to here and choose different number of columns. So if you want a section, or if you want some text in columns but the rest of your document left alone, remember you have to put in a section break to do that. Something that most people don't know how to do, but you have a, you're likely to run into that, uh, that challenge to put some text in a column. While we're here in the layout, well, it's not on the layout. We would also like to put a border around our document. Remember how we do borders? I believe it's under design. Way over on the right, page border. And also remember, if you wanted to set a color or set a watermark, they're over here in design as well. We did page border in one of the assignments. I think it was that first poster one. So reminding you by practicing on the midterm that you can make page borders and the options available to you. In the, bo in the book poster, you just did like a solid or it was a dashed border. Let's do something a little more exciting. Let's choose an artsy border. Let's see what artsy border should we choose. How about, I saw, let's see, what do we have here? Some pretty ugly ones. How about, We've got pumpkins. How about pumpkins? And instead of just boring black and white pumpkins, let's make them orange pumpkins. And click OK. Now I have orange pumpkin borders around every page in my document. So it's not just dotted lines or colored lines. I can put in artsy borders. If you're an elementary school teacher, you'll do this all the time. Entertain your kids with cool whimsical borders around your documents. So remember the borders underneath design page borders. And let's see what else we want to make sure you know how to do in documents, tables, oh, images. Remember our images? Let's bring in a, a uh, shape. Oh, not that, not an online picture. Let's bring in a shape. How about we'll do, uh, how about a little cloud shape? And remember all the image effects or shape effects we can apply. We can choose shape effects here. We have many built in. Let's do a drop shadow. Let's add glow. And how about maybe a little bevel? 3D rotation. Maybe some of that too. And remember, in a shape fill, I can choose to fill a shape with a color, with a picture, with a gradient, or with a texture. And we'll fill this with a wood grain texture, just for practice at that. I can do the same thing with images, applying various effects. And remember, there are built-in styles for images. Let's just do one image. Since we did that in the in our one assignment, I'm going to do an insert. We'll do online picture because then I don't have to go hunt for a file. I may be giving you files. Let's just choose a flower picture. And I'll choose that one. And remember the picture effects. Oh, this one. It's inside of a box. Let's see if we can apply picture effects to that. Oh, it's inside of a box. Let's see if I can get that out of the box. Let's try double click and copy. How do we do that? Do we drag? There we go. There we go. I can click that rose and drag it out of there. Now let's get rid of that box and see what picture effects I can apply to this. I can apply, oh, I like, kind of like the 3D stuff. The wrapping, right now it's behind text. Let's change the wrapping to behind text so then I can make it completely independent of the text. 
put it anywhere I like. And one of the last things we're going to do here with Word, making sure, let's see, have we covered everything? Change tables, other things that you should know. Oh, let's do the footnote. I forgot. I mentioned footnotes and footers. Let's make sure we know the how to get in a footnote and a foot, uh, an endnote. Footnotes and endnotes. Footnotes under references, footnote right there. Reference, footnote, and let's just say this is a footnote. This is a cool footnote. Okay, so footnotes under references. Endnotes, well, I have to decide where I'm going to be referencing my endnote from. So let's have another paragraph and say then we're going to reference to endnote. And where are endnotes? Right here. And then I'll put in, this is an endnote. So endnotes and footnotes, not quite the same. The endnote is a reference to by a letter, footnote by number. And remember, endnotes will appear at the end of the, very, of the complete text of my document, where the footnote will stay on that page. So if I add some more lines after this, my endnote now has jumped to the end of the next page where the footnote has stayed on that page. Now one of the things that uh, was a major part of your research paper part project was insert a bibliographic, bibliographic reference. Now I'll be giving you the information about the reference, but I'll, you'll be expected to insert a both a placeholder and finally, at the end, a bibliography. Bib bibliography at the end. Remember how to do the bibliography? Well, first we got to get our placeholders. So let's go to let's put a placeholder. Placeholder. Insert citation. Might as well add the new source at the same time. Then you don't have to come back and visit edit the source. So citation, add new source, where the citation would go, the parenthetical reference, and let's just choose randomly here. How about an article in a periodical, and the author is, how about we make it uh, fish, comma, Dr. Jack. Actually, his, his official name is John H. Fish. And the title is Greek scholars scholars of Dubuque some periodical uh, Bible news year 2020 we made up an article and there may be other information given to you in a reference click OK and the placeholder gets created the parenthetical reference as well as the information is in our sources. Another thing you want to do is add a bibliography. Typically that will go at the end of your document and we'll put it at the end, after the end note and we'll insert, the easiest way to insert a bibliography is go to the references page, bibliography, insert bibliography. And there it appears. The style of the bibliography will be determined right here by the style. So you'll be told what style of bibliography. Simply use your references to insert your bibliography. Now if there's other ones that appear here because they've been stored in your document, that's just fine. So those are the kind of things you need to be able to do in your, in your document. Now, let's do the PowerPoint for the rest of the time. So that will be your practice midterm. I'll leave that up, and now I'm going to start PowerPoint and do some practice with PowerPoint. Here's the kind of things you're going to need to create with PowerPoint. 
starting with a blank presentation. First thing we'll do is we'll just we'll be giving you some random topic. We're going to have to be inserting some information. So I'll call this uh, a random topic. You'll have to put in a title page for it and a subtitle. And choose a theme. Well, design. You'll be told what, what theme to choose. And then what you're going to need to do is edit the master slide or the slide master to have your name appear on every slide. Remember how that is done? Underneath view, I can view the slide master right here. And if I want it to appear on every slide, no matter what kind of slide it is, make sure to slide up all the way to the super master slide, the one that's larger than all the rest. Anything you put here on the super master will appear on every slide. So let's insert your name as word art on every slide. So let's do insert, word art, choose a style. I'm going to put my name. I'm going to rotate it just for fun, holding the shift key down so it rotates vertical, snaps vertical. Since it is word art, I'm going to apply some word art effects to it. I especially love the, actually that was shape effects, whereas here's text effects. I would choose a transform text effect to that word art. Something really cool. And I'm going to move my text over here. And while I'm here, I am also going to add an animation to it. Did you know you can have animation on your master slides? And have that, we'll have that do a uh, float in. No, I'm going to do fly in because I want to fly in from the left. Float in will only float in from the top or bottom. I'm going to change that to a fly in from the left. I'm going to make it a slow fly-in, change the duration to two seconds, and have it start automatically with every slide by changing the start from on click to after previous. Now every time I go to any slide, it will slowly fade in from the left. So remember how that's done. You view slide master. If I want to go back to the normal view, I can come down here and click this little guy here, go back to the normal view of slides, or I could go to view, close master view. Now let's add some slides by hitting control M. And let's play this now with the little, uh, I'll hit F5 to play this. My name didn't fade in on that one. Let's try that one. There it faded in. I must not have set it to, uh, show on the title slide. I thought I had edit the master slide. Let me check that. View, slide master. Yeah, it's on the super master, but it looks like, oh, maybe it's that image covers it up. It's in front of that. If I sent this image to the back, I'll bet you I'll see it. So let's do as send to back. Oh, still not appearing. Oh, I thought my name would appear there. Maybe, oh, I didn't realize. Other, other designs, it hasn't hit it from the title side. Well, anyway, the main thing for you to know is how to edit your slide master. Now, what else do you need to do with PowerPoint? That I want to make sure you're aware of. Let's see here. We've brought in slides. We've edited the master slide. We've applied a format to that, animation to that. Let's practice some animation now. I'm going to add another slot. Well, I might as well add animation to this slide. Let's, first of all, just animate the text. Title for this slide. To animate that text, I'm going to go to the Animations tab and choose an entrance animation. This one I am going to have it float in from the top. Float down. Default for any effect, remember, is on click. Now let's add some shapes and play with the animations that I want you to know out of this class. First of all, let's insert some shapes just to have something to animate. So let's pick a shape. How about 
something interesting. How about a little heart? That'll be one of our shapes. And let's bring in another shape. How about insert a shape? How about a rounded rectangle? And one more shape. How about a do we have a, a cloud? We like I like that little cloudy guy. Where did that cloud go? There it is. So three shapes. Now, the animation we're going to want to do with these shapes, you'll begin an instruction something like this. Heart appears on click. Rectangle appears two seconds later. Cloud makes a wind sound when clicked. Any time when clicked, not just when I have one click. Any time when I click the when I click the cloud it's gonna make a wind sound. Next click rectangle. Oh how about we do this? On the next click they all leave together. All right, so let's do that first animation. Select the heart, animations. Now I didn't say what type of appearance it has, but it needs, when it says appears, that means it needs an entrance animation. So since I didn't specify, you get to pick your entrance animation. So I'll do, I'll do shape. And then the next animation, the rectangle appears two seconds later. Click the rectangle. I give him an entrance animation. You get to choose which one. I'm going to have him, how about we'll have him zoom in. But now I need to have him appear two seconds later not waiting for a click. So how do I do that? After previous and then the delay of two seconds. So heart appears. Now this one has the same number. And you know why this has a two instead of a one? Because this guy is the first animation on that page. Normally, if there were no other animations, I would have a number one showing up here. Let's test to see if that works that way. I'll play this slide. Waiting for a click. Notice this has no entrance animation, so the cloud is just sitting there, not animated yet. Click and the, oh, there's the second one. I forgot about that one. Now the second one, heart appears, 1001, 1002, no clicks, and there appears the rectangle. Now, since I didn't have any animation on the cloud, it's just sitting there without entering, which is just fine because I haven't specified that the cloud is appearing. But we do want to make the cloud make a wind sound anytime I click on it. Remember how that's done. I have to choose an animation, not an entrance animation. I can choose an animation. Typically, well, yeah, it has to be one of these yellow ones. Now, there's more emphasis effects that you can, you're welcome to choose those as well. Let's do a blink. Now the cloud has a blink animation. And if I play this slide, notice it's, it doesn't have any entrance. Entrance, entrance. Now whenever I click on the, actually, currently, whenever I click anytime, it does the flash once. And I click again, it goes to the end of my slideshow. I want the cloud to blink when I click on it. So I go back to that cloud. And in his animation, that is selected because I selected the cloud, in the animation tab, change the trigger to be on click of the cloud. Trigger on click of. That's probably one of the most common ones that people forget on this is if you want something to make a sound or animate when I click on it, set the trigger on click of the cloud. But I haven't yet made the sound, have I? 
right now when I click on it it will do the little flash but it's not making a sound so how do I make the sound well on the animation pane I can go to the effect options here and up pops the effect options for blink and there I can specify a sound and I can choose breeze and now when I play the slide it makes a breeze sound every time I click on it along with that emphasis animation now let's do one more thing here uh, because it's easy thing to forget let's have that heart do the same thing let's add to the heart heart beats when clicked the reason I wanted to do that to the heart is because it's so easy to forget when I select the heart and I want to have that teetering or beat you want to choose an animation here but no you don't want to change it here because it's already has an entrance animation you want to add an animation to the heart and I will choose the how about the teeter animation and now change the trigger of that one you guessed it to the trigger on click of the heart so remember if you have a second animation you have an entrance and you want it to do something else don't change the green one add an emphasis now you see it has two effects attached to it and if I view the animation pane which is very helpful when I have multiple animations I see that I have two things being triggered showing up here in the trigger part and I can see here that has an appearance these appear together and now the last thing oh let's make the heart beat when clicked I haven't chosen the sound yet I have I have a teetering let's edit that option I can also go to the options over here on the animation pane I can edit my effect options do we have a heartbeat sound what do we have here applause arrow bomb breeze camera chime I guess click is sort of like a heartbeat a whoosh that's sort of a heartbeat ish fast heartbeat now let's get that last one on the next click they all leave together well what do I do here's an easy way click shift click shift click add animation and choose one of the red exit animations now there and if I choose one they'll all do the same thing well, that's fine let's go ahead and have them zoom out for the exit and now you see all three of them now have zoom out attached now if I did that one at a time I'd have to add a red one add a yeah exit to each one and then set to with previous this one to with previous but by having them three selected if I know I want to do the same thing to all of them have them three selected then then add that exit animation now let's watch our slide waiting for the heart to appear well actually there's the text appears and then the heart appears on a click 1001 1002 the rectangle should appear cloud makes a wind sound the heart beats and when I click anywhere else they should all leave together so now you've practiced your animation that something like this will be on the midterm with animation like this the rest is more of you know, grabbing an image let's do oh, one more thing that I want to be sure you practice with there will be bring in a video clip and trim it so insert video I'll be giving you a video clip I'm just gonna choose one from the last assignment that's that little guy waking up from bed we have a video clip remember on a video clip if you want to see part of it not the whole clip played go to the playback and trim it remember how to trim a video to a specific clip and I'll be giving you a video with a specific piece that you need to trim and only that part plays when you either hit the play button or click on it now you are practice have practiced most of the things or that most of the harder things there will, there will be other things that I think are are less challenging that you'll still have to do and you'll have a limited time so be sure you've 
practiced this and don't get stuck on one thing. Remember your test skills. Do the easy stuff first. If you get stuck on something, skip over that. Come back to it. Don't get stuck and then leave a bunch of easy stuff unfinished. That's what your midterm is going to be. A word project and a PowerPoint project. And there'll be files to download. There's no multiple choice questions. It's work on this project given some instructions. All right. That's it for today. You are now ready to ace the midterm. I'll end the recording. I'll put this recording up on uh, uh, the class link resources so you can, if you want to review anything I just did today. Where is my recorder? Oh, there's it.